told you Airlink can look like this? Oh, yeah. Really? I'm not kidding. Looks amazing, doesn't it? When I first got my Quest 2 and started using Airlink to play PC VR games, I was amazed at how good games like Half-Life Alex looked on the Quest 2, and at the same time, amazed at how bad they would also look at times when using Airlink. It was a total mixed bag of performance. Sometimes the game would look amazing, and other times it was a blurry, muddy mess like you're seeing right now. Is this your experience too? Well, seeing as you're watching this, it probably is, and you're wanting to know what, if anything, you can do to make it look better. So let's do that! The very first and the most important thing we need to do is make sure our gaming PC or laptop is connected to our wireless AC or wireless AX router using an Ethernet cable. To get the best performance and best looking graphics out of Airlink, this is not optional. Your router must support at least wireless AC and you must connect your PC to your router with an Ethernet cable. The next and second most important thing we're going to do is set our Wi-Fi channel bandwidth. To do this, we need to get on our computer and log into our router. If you don't know how to log into your router, you're going to have to check your router's owner's manual or look up how online. I have an ASUS router, so to log into mine, I need to go to router.asus.com. We then need to enter our username and password, and once we're in, we need to go to our wireless settings. Now, depending on the make and model of your router, your menus are going to look very different than mine, but you should have the settings we're going to change in some shape or form. You probably already know this, but just in case, when using Airlink, you want to be connected to your router's five gigahertz band for the best experience. You do not want to connect your Quest 2 to your 2.4 gigahertz band when using Airlink. Okay, so we need to select our 5 gigahertz band, and under channel bandwidth, we want to make sure this is set to 80 megahertz. This is very important to getting the best performance possible when using Airlink. I used to have mine set on auto, and changing this one setting has made a very big difference for me. All right, now we need to move into our play area, which we want to be as near to our router as possible. Turn on our Quest 2 and connect to our PC using Airlink. Now we actually need to pop back out of our headset for a minute and load up the Oculus Debug tool on our PC. If you don't know how to do that, you're going to need to open up Windows Explorer by clicking on the folder icon on the taskbar, navigate to your C drive, double click on Program Files, then on Oculus, then Support, then Oculus Diagnostics, and finally on Oculus Debug tool. Toward the bottom here, we have an option called Link Sharpening. I think this is turned on by default, but we just wanna make sure this is set to Enabled. It really does provide a night and day difference. With that done, let's switch over to the Oculus app on our PC. Click on Devices here on the left, then click on your Quest 2, and scroll down in the Settings menu here to Graphics Preferences. Click on It, and here you can select your Quest 2's refresh rate when using PC VR, and change the render resolution. Just to be clear, this only affects settings for PC VR. It does not change the refresh rate and resolution for standalone or native Quest 2 content. Just how high you can turn up your render resolution will depend heavily on your PC's graphics card. I have an RTX 3080 Ti, so I like to turn my render resolution up to 4704 by 2384. Depending on your graphics card, you'll have to experiment a bit with what resolution you can set here and still get a good playable frame rate. As for the refresh rate, I like to set mine to 90Hz, but again, depending on your PC's hardware, you may want to leave yours at 72Hz. Once we're done here, we can click save and restart, and as soon as the Oculus app loads back up, we can put our headset back on and launch Airlink once again. On our menu bar here in the Rift interface, we're going to go all the way to the left and click on the Airlink button. And on this menu, we're going to keep the bitrate set to dynamic, but we're just going to max this slider out. I don't recommend setting a fixed bitrate as it can negatively impact your games pretty badly if the bitrate suddenly drops for some reason. For playing Oculus games, the only thing we have left now is to load up a game, go to our settings, and set our graphics quality where we want it. Again, how high you can turn up the settings in your game is going to depend on your PC's hardware. For Steam VR games, we'll need to launch Steam VR, of course, hit the menu button on the left controller, 
then click on the settings cog here on the right. Under the video tab, we can change the render resolution by clicking on custom and then setting the resolution per eye to whatever it is we want it to be. With my 3080 Ti, it defaults to 150% render resolution, which looks amazing. So I just leave it there. Of course, your mileage may vary, so you may have to play around with it a bit and find what setting looks the best to you and also gives you a nice playable frame rate. And like before, once you've loaded into your Steam VR game, you'll want to go to that game's graphical settings and set them as high as your graphics card can handle while still getting acceptable performance, of course. With all that done, gaming using Airlink should now look and play better than ever. A great game to test this out with if you're looking for one is Red Matter 2. Haven't heard of it? Well, then you should check out my review video right here. Go on, click it. You know you want to. <laughs>